Hello, this is Dr. Loach from HumanBodyHelp.com, and today I'm going to be going over the structures of the oscoxa bone. This is one of the hip bones. Okay. Now what we're looking at, the surface that we're looking at right now, would be the internal surface. If I were to turn the bone like this, you could see how this and another bone on this side would make up the bony pelvis. Okay. So this would be inside the pelvis. And then outside of the pelvis, we could see an articular surface right here. This is where the head of the femur would articulate. Okay. This would be anterior. Okay. Our pubic bone is right here, and our pubic symphysis would be here. This is posterior. This is where the sacrum would articulate. This would be superior. When we put our hands on our hips, we put our hands on this structure right here. So let's run through some of the structures on this bone. I'll turn it like this. This structure right here is the iliac fossa. Okay. Iliac fossa. This structure right here is the iliac crest. Iliac crest. Here we can see the anterior superior iliac spine right here. And then down here would be the anterior inferior iliac spine. Here we would see the superior ramus of the pubis. Okay. Inferior ramus of the pubis would be down here. Okay. And then this part right here would be the ischial ramus, sometimes pronounced ischial ramus. So I've mentioned ilium, ischium, and pubis. Those three bones all join right here at this part of the oscoxa bone and fuse to make this bone as a whole. Okay. If I were to turn this over so that we could see the other side, we would see that they all join at this structure right here known as the acetabulum. Okay, this is a cup-like structure for the ball and socket joint that we call the hip joint. The head of the femur would articulate here. And then the ligamentum teres, the round ligament of the head of the femur that attaches to the fovea capitis on the femur, that would attach right in here. This would be the articular surface for the sacrum. This structure right here would be the greater sciatic notch, and there's also a lesser sciatic notch down here, inferior to this structure known as the ischial spine or ischial spine. Okay. This big hole right here, this is the obturator foramen. And then we'll see a big bump on the back of this oscoxa bone. Okay, this would be a site of attachment for the hamstrings. This is going to be the ischial tuberosity or ischial tuberosity. Okay. If we look at this view, we could see the ischial tuberosity better or ischial tuberosity. We could see the ischial spine or ischial spine. We could see lesser and greater sciatic notches here. Okay. We could also see the external surface of the ilium. This would be the iliac pillar, and then there's an iliac tubercle right up here. Okay, we can also see anterior superior iliac spine and anterior inferior iliac spine down here. On the back, we have similar spines. We've got a posterior superior iliac spine and then a posterior inferior iliac spine back there. Sometimes on some models, they include the gluteal lines. Okay? The inferior gluteal line would be down here. Okay? The anterior gluteal line would be up here. And then posterior gluteal line would be back here. Remember, the head would be up toward this direction, 
the legs would be down here. This is the articulation for the head of the femur known as the acetabulum. Maybe we can get a better view of the obturator foramen as well as the uh, superior ramus of the pubis. Right at this aspect of the pubis, we have this big bump right here, and this is going to be one of the sites for attachment of the rectus abdominis muscle. This right here is the pubic tubercle. Okay. Again, pubic symphysis would sit right here, a fibrocartilage disc. If you found this video helpful, click like and consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to visit www.humanbodyhelp.com.